Welcome back to the Build Series. I'm Corey Fields and we're building three single family homes right here in Northwest Atlanta. Today in episode two is foundation prep. Forming the slab, setting the footings and getting everything perfectly squared away for a bulletproof base. Because if the foundation isn't right, nothing else matters. Let's dive in. Think of your house like a living organism. Without a strong backbone, your foundation, everything else collapses. Forget fancy finishes or custom cabinetry. If the base isn't rock solid, you'll face endless headaches, cracks, settlement, or even worse. So let's get it right before we even think about walls or a roof. What is a foundation and why is it essential? A foundation supports every load, from walls and floors to furniture and people. Mistakes here lead to uneven floors, cracks, or long-term structural issues. In short, the foundation is the backbone. And if you're building in a tight urban lot, it's even more crucial every inch is accounted for. In many builds, you'll see footings poured first, then a separate slab on top. But here we're using a monolithic slab. The footings in the slab get placed in one continuous pour. This approach cuts down on cold joints, speeds up the timeline, and ensures a more uniform transfer of weight. It's particularly handy for infill lots like ours where multiple pours can be a logistical nightmare. We started by forming up the footprint of the house using two by eights, which allow us enough room for our four inches of aggregate plus our four inches of concrete. But if the slope is more pronounced on one side of the foundation, we'll step up to some two by tens or in some cases two by twelves. But in our case, the front of the slab sat lower, so we'll cut and stack form boards wherever they're needed to keep the entire slab level. We only form the general footprint of the house first, so the plumbers can come in and run under slab lines, and then the concrete crew can come in after with the skid steer and spread all the aggregate without the porches getting in their way. And we'll form up those porch sections just before the actual pour. This sequence, house footprint first, porches later, ensures the plumbing layout is accessible and that we can quickly adjust any boards that handle unexpected grade changes before it's time to pour. Now that the slab's formed, let's talk footings, the real workhorses of this foundation. These footings will be 24 inches wide by 20 inches deep, which must be buried below grade to meet code. By sitting under the undisturbed soil line, these footings avoid potential frost heave and maintain a stable base for our two-story structures. Frost heave is a phenomenon that occurs when water in the soil freezes and expands, causing the ground to lift upwards in colder climates. Any part of the foundation or footing that isn't buried below the frost line can be pushed up by this frozen, expanding soil. Once the ice thaws, the soil settles back down, but by that point, the foundation may have cracked or shifted. This is why building code requires footings to sit below the local frost line, preventing freeze-thaw cycle from damaging structures. It's all about ensuring long-term stability. Our under slab plumbing starts with the engineer's plans, which pinpoint where each bathroom, kitchen, and utility line runs. We also note where the city's water tap and sewer ladder will come in, which is by the street, so everything will run out of the front of the house. With that in hand, our plumbers lay out each line so it all connects seamlessly once the slab is poured. Anywhere pipes cross a footing, we need a sleeve, preventing friction or damage once the concrete sets. We also insulate hot water lines to retain heat and wrap any water supply lines so the concrete won't corrode them. No one wants to chip through fresh concrete to fix a hidden leak. Inspectors check venting, drain sizes, water line protection, you name it, but we don't solely rely on them. If a toilet drain is off by just a few inches, you'll face jackhammer work after the pour. And that's time and money down the drain, literally. A careful layout now means fewer headaches down the road. We won't dive into every detail like exactly how to measure slopes or vent lines because that's a whole other lesson in itself, but if you grasp these basics, aligning with the plan, ensuring proper slope, and protecting each line, you'll set yourself up for a smoother build and happy inspector. With our under slab plumbing in place, it's time to connect each house to the city's sewer and water lines. No matter how perfectly the slab's plumbed, if the sewer can't drain or the faucets can't flow, you got a problem. In our case, each lot already had a lateral in decent shape. If you're not so lucky, say no lateral or a damaged main, you're facing extra cost and time, possibly opening up the street or adding a septic system if there's no city main nearby. We trench down to the lateral, then tie in using Schedule 40 PVC and securing it with a boot. 
We sealed that joint with grout for a watertight finish. And since there are three homes on this lot, we repeated this process for each one, ensuring every home has its own leak-free connection. And at the same time, we also lay our water lines so we can then tie into the city's water meters, ensuring it's properly sized and pressure tested before backfilling. The depth can vary by local code, but the key is to keep it below the frost line and again, protecting it with a sleeve if it crosses any footings. If any of the city's lines are in rough shape, you could be waiting on their crew to handle the repairs. That could take weeks. We were fortunate enough to have all of ours in solid conditions so we could stay on schedule. Before we backfill the trench, all of our connections are checked by inspectors. Any leaks or misalignments, and you're gonna have to redig. With our sewer and water line tie-in sorted, it's time for the final prep that makes these slabs ready to pour. We start by spreading our four inches of gravel for drainage and stability. Because if water can't drain under the slab, you risk it pooling and softening the soil. Then we'll use a skid steer to level everything out so when we pour, the concrete thickness stays consistent. We'll do the same process for each of our three house footprints so every slab starts on solid ground. Next, we'll roll out our six mil poly acting as our moisture barrier. Concrete naturally holds some moisture, so this barrier stops groundwater from wicking up into the slab, which can lead to damp odors or long-term flooring issues. In the footings, being much thicker, water won't seep all the way up, so we don't bother with poly there. But for that four inch slab on top, the plastic keeps everything dry and separated from the ground. Next, we'll reinforce our foundation. Our footings get two sticks of rebar placed on rebar chairs to keep the steel centered exactly as the engineer specified. Then above that, in the main slab, we'll use wire mesh to help control cracking. The mesh doesn't need chairs, but we'll pull it up slightly during the pour so it stays in the mid-height of the slab. Where load-bearing walls or our point load sit, we'll add extra rebar on top of the wire mesh for extra strength. Rebar in the footings plus wire mesh in the slab makes the entire foundation far more resistant to shifting or cracking. It's a lot of layering, gravel, poly, rebar, but if we even skipped one, we'd compromise the entire slab's integrity. With the main slab fully prepped, gravel spread, poly laid, and rebar in place, we then formed up our porches, ensuring they'll tie seamlessly into the main slab. And now that everything is set, we're ready to pour our concrete. We got lucky on this project. No major surprises, no poor soil conditions, but if you do hit soft soil, you may need piers or an other engineered solution to help stabilize the foundation. This entire process took us a total of six days and on day seven, we'll be pouring. If you plan on starting a new build, take your time and get the foundation right. The rest of the build becomes smoother and you'll avoid costly rework. It's the difference between cost and value. Spend wisely on materials and labor to ensure a long lasting result. And that's a wrap on foundation prep. Forms are set, plumbing's in, sewer's connected, and we're ready to pour. Next up in episode three, we're getting into the concrete pour. How we chose the right mix, scheduling trucks, and getting set up for a clean level finish. If you're serious about learning how to build or just want to see these homes go from dirt to done, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single phase. I'm Corey Fields, and that's it for episode two of the build series. I'll see you guys in the next one.